Hey girls, welcome. And today we're gonna to talk about the on purpose kind of woman. We'll see what God has for us. Here. I'm so glad you joined us today. Thank you for tuning in. We believe that Women Rock is a beautiful time for us to get together, learn God's word together, find out what the word of God has to say about us being women. The world is screaming all these different things about who you are and what the world wants you to be. But did you know that God formed you in your mother's womb? That he actually created you to be the woman that you're called to be. And so we're gonna dig in today and we're gonna find out what God has to say about us to us and how we as women can step into all that he has for us. And so we've been going through Proverbs 31. What an incredible, incredible book. But the neatest thing about Proverbs 31 is that it's called the book of wisdom. And I believe that it's really neat that God said in Proverbs 31 that he's gonna bring wisdom to us as believers, but he ends the book of wisdom with women. I don't know, I just think we're special in God's heart. I believe that God wants to do something through us and in us, even in the day and age that we're living in. And the neatest thing about this story is it's a mom speaking to her son and telling her son, what to look for in a wife. Now you might be sitting there going, listen, I'm not a wife, I'm single, this doesn't re reflect to me, but it really does. Don't stop there, don't cut me off yet. Because the neatest thing about Christ is that Jesus said that we are the church and that he is God, right? But that also he's saying that we as the church are his bride and that he is our groom. And so that this is a beautiful love story between us and Christ. And he's giving us a reflection of who we are in the body of Christ. So not just as a woman, but as a believer, as a saint of the Most High God. So Proverbs 31, 16, let's start there. It says, she considers a field and she buys it. I like that. I like buying goods. Good stuff. So from her profit, she plants a vineyard. But not only does she buy something, but she actually plants and then she has a vineyard, which means she's producing good. But this woman is not just any type of woman. She's an on purpose kind of woman. What kind of day is in front of you? You know, every time I wake up in the morning and I get going, I have three children that are running out the door and as they're turning into teenagers, they all have different schedules and none of them drive yet. So guess who it is? It's me, it's my responsibility. And then I have a busy church that we're running. I have family on the side that are in need of things. There's so many things coming at me all the time. And so I have to stop myself, I have to take a moment and I have to consider what my steps look like for that day. And today is your day. And what you do today matters. Everything that you make a decision about matters. And this woman understood the importance of who she was here on this earth and that she was on mission for the kingdom, but she also considered. And when I think of consider, I think that's a big word. Personally, it means that you are to carefully plan. It means that you are devising a plan, putting it together. You are searching for the best solution. Sometimes we just make quick decisions and then we find ourselves in really bad places. Have you ever been there? I've been there. And those are never fun situations to get yourself out of. And so if we would just slow down for a second and we consider what's in front of us and invite the Holy Spirit to come be a part of what is happening in our world. I, every morning, stop and I just spend some time with the Lord. I kind of think about my day, I think about my week, I think about what's in front of me, I ask the Lord, is this where you want me to be? Is this how you want me to do it? And I invite him in to every decision that I make because I know every decision is a reflection of who he is because I carry the Holy Spirit with me everywhere I go. I am not my own, but I am a daughter of the Most High God, and guess what? you're a daughter of the Most High God. That means you are royalty. You carry the kingdom of God everywhere you go. And that is our time and our place to step into what God has for us. And this woman understood this. She considered a field and she planted a vineyard for profit. These are big deals. Everything you put your hand to today is going to profit something. You're gonna either profit blessing or a curse. And I believe that God wants you to profit from blessing. That means you gotta get God in on the plan. You gotta get God in on the details of what's in front of you for your children, for your families, for your jobs, for your school, for whatever conversation you're gonna have with somebody, whatever it is that you're about to step into, bring God into it. 
My favorite verse that I live by, especially when I was going through so many hard things in life, this verse has been an anchor for me and it's a very common verse. You may even know it and you can read it along with me. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Isn't that good news? That God has already laid out our life. He's already thought it through. He already knows where we're going. He already knows what steps we need to take. It says the Lord that they are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. When we consider that verse for our lives, that means that we are sowing into good ground. I want to ask you today, what kind of ground are you sowing into? This woman bought the field and she prepared it so that it would, it would produce goodness. What ground are you sowing into? What do you need to be sowing into and actually not putting more of your time and effort into? Is it is it something that's going to fulfill the plan of God? Is it something that's going to expand the kingdom? Is it something that's building the earth for his name's sake? You see, you are a woman on mission. You might be at home alone. You might be driving your car on your way to work. You might be feeling discouraged today, but I'm here to tell you that you are awesome and that God loves you and that you have been brought to this earth on purpose for such a time as this. And that every plan that is laid out before you, you need to take into consideration with the Holy Spirit and step into every day with God. This woman knew that and she was ready to produce good fruit out of that. I want to produce good fruit. The coolest thing about Proverbs 31 is that it actually lines up and coincides with the Hebrew alphabet, which is kind of neat. And so in this verse, the letter is Izan. I'm probably totally not even saying that right, but actually the symbol of this letter looks like a sword. I like that because this sword represents a slashing of maybe religious traditions or things that are said about us girls that we're not good enough at that or you can't preach or you can't do this and you can't do that. I believe it's a slashing away of all those mindsets because God has a purpose and a plan for us as women. He didn't create us to just sit by the sidelines and do nothing. He created us to get moving and to do something amazing. He also shows us that, that we are not afraid, but we are stepping into what he has for us. You see, we are designed for accomplishment. Isn't that good news? We're, in, we're engineered for success. God thought of you and he's like, I'm going to put her together and I'm going to create her to be successful in all she puts her hand to. We are endowed with a seed of greatness. That's, wow, that I've got greatness living on the inside of me, absolutely. And we've got to pull that up out of ourselves, step into what God has for us. And this woman in Proverbs 6, 31, 16 knew this, and she stepped into what God had for her. There's nothing less than God has for us than greatness. He wants you to succeed. He wants your children to be blessed. He wants you to build the kingdom of God. He wants you to sow into the earth and, and to bear goodness and love and grace and mercy. You are the ambassador of all these things. I love that. So we have to count the cost. We have to evaluate our circumstances. That sometimes takes a little bit of time and effort. Sometimes that is good. We're gonna need wisdom from the heaven. We're gonna need that download from Christ. Like, what do I do with this? I don't really know where to go with this decision. Do I, do I move in this direction, God, or do I not move in this direction? We have to look to expand what the kingdom needs us to do in our lives. If you're sitting idle at home and you're not active in a local church, or maybe you're not doing something for Christ, I wanna challenge you today to start bringing that to your prayer and saying, what ground, God, can I start sowing into? Can I start building? Can I start putting into your kingdom, God? And out of that, you're going to be blessed. You see, when, when things don't make sense, God's always on the scene ready to do something new. So Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. That's me. I know that's you. To those who are called according to his purpose. You see, it's not our purpose that we're fulfilling here. It's his purpose through us in our lives that every moment, every decision we've got to bring him in on. Matthew 13, 44 in the Amplified, it says that the kingdom of heaven is like something precious buried in a field. That's kind of different, right? Which a man found and he hid again. And then his joy, he goes and he sells all that he has to buy that field because he knew what was in the ground. He knew that it was life. He knew that it was destiny. He knew that it was the joy of the Lord. He knew that it was grace and mercy. You carry all of this in everything that you do in your life. You see, we've got to consider whether we are fit for the use of the kingdom. And I'm telling you today, you are fit. You've got this, girlfriend. You are a Proverbs 31 woman. You are ready to go. 
We also need to look at our lives and we have to see what the effects of what we're producing is. Is it good fruit or is it bad fruit? I want to produce good fruit. What about you? So if something that in your life is producing bad fruit, you've got to adjust that. You've got to bring that before the Lord and ask him totally candidly and with full integrity, God, this is not working out in my life. I'm not doing this well. Can you teach me a new path and a new way to do this the right way? And invite him in to begin to change you from the inside out and be more like him every day. We've got to plant. We've got to sow into. We've got to put into others. We've got to, we've got to get moving and put our hands to something because this means that there's going to be improvement. It's going to expand and it's going to make something beautiful. See, the Proverbs 31 girl leaves her environment better than when she first got there. And I believe that we're called to do that. We are called to build up. We are called to encourage. We are called to be something that others may not see, but God sees in you. And so step into it. Walk in wisdom this, this week. Do something beyond yourself. Go give to someone. Love someone big. And remember, bring it to the workplace. Bring it to your schools. Bring it into your marriages. Bring it into your parenting. John, 1 John 4.4 says that you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So when you want to say, I'm not that girl, I'm here to say, oh, yes, you are. If you ask Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, you are that girl. I know you can do this. Consider a field in verse 16, and, and she buys it, and from her profit she plants a vineyard. Let's be women that profit and plant. Let's be women that go beyond and that consider what God wants and that we step into all that he has for us. I love you girls. I hope you're blessed. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, I don't want to leave this opportunity to give, give you a chance to know who he is. He loves you very, very much. And all you have to do is pray a prayer and ask him to come and be the Lord and Savior of your life. What you're doing by that is saying, I'm leaving my old man, my sinful nature, everything that was before Christ, gone. And I'm stepping into the kingdom of God and I'm becoming a daughter of the Most High God. And if you want that today, I'm going to pray this prayer with you. It's very simple. All you got to do is repeat the prayer after me and ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. And when we're done, you can go ahead and look at rockchurch.com and just say get to know God button and we will connect with you on that level and we'll send you some material on what to do next. But let's pray together. Say, Dear Father God, I come before you right now. And I ask that you would forgive me for my sins, that you would come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life, that from today, I leave my old man behind and I step in to all that you have for me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Teach me from your word. Show me how to be the daughter that you've called me to be. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Yay, I'm so excited for you. That is the best decision of your life. You are now entered into the kingdom of God. I love you so much. Connect with us on www.rock.church.com and we'll see you then. God bless you.